Hello there, Alaskans, wherever you are. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right and a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. Good Alaska, this is Scott Levesque, and you're listening to the midweek episode of the Must Read Alaska podcast. It has been a while since I've been with you guys. Uh, since the start of the new year, it's kind of been a little bit of a hiatus, not on purpose. There's a lot of things going on, but I'm glad to be back, and there is a ton to talk about, and we're probably going to unpack a lot of what's going on, not just nationally, but more importantly in Alaska over the next couple of weeks as we uh, get ready for a lot of new changes now with President Biden in office. But before we start, if you could just take a moment and give this podcast a five-star review, that would be incredible. It helps us when it comes to search. It helps us when it comes to people finding out uh, Alaska politics, the works. And if you if you just want to take it a step further, why don't you go ahead and write us a written review. That also even helps us more with our increased search capabilities. So again, we thank you for your input and your feedback. We love our listeners and readers, and we just want to, again, just try to give you the best content we can on a weekly basis. But before we get going, let's dive into some really interesting things that have happened since the inauguration. And and I can tell you the first thing on my mind that, um, again, we knew this was going to happen if Biden took office. We knew this was going to happen. But right now, Biden has ordered all individuals on federal land must wear masks. Now, it's interesting. If you go to Must Read Alaska, there's an actual story that Suzanne Downing wrote about this. And the irony of it is, is that you can actually see live video from C-SPAN of Joe Biden at the Lincoln Memorial on January 20th without a mask. I, I mean, it doesn't you, you can't make this stuff up. You really can't. But some of you may not know, all of you probably should, that Alaska is the state that has the most federal land. So the federal government owns almost 62% of Alaska's total land. And I think that's around, I think, 220, 225 million acres. And the problem with this is, what does this mean for Alaskans? I mean, if you look at Southeast, it is it is clearly just, it's all federal land down there. I mean, we have the National Forest down there. Uh, there's a lot of other... Uh, You know, a lot of other things to think about, you know, the Iditarod, which crosses tons of federal land. I mean, we've got a lot of events that that Alaskans um, either participate in or on federal land. So now we've got this mask mandate for any individual that is on federal land. And I think this is again, it's 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 a little disconcerting, but it's just the start of what uh, we're going to see from the Biden administration Uh, coinciding with that. and And I don't think there's been any real headway in this, but Biden's really looking to do a national mass mandate. I mean, that is really the ultimate goal of the Democrats right now is to get a national mask mandate through uh, enforcing masks across the country. And I think that would be obviously, I think that's a terrible idea. But again, this is just sort of the beginning of what we're seeing already day one out of the Biden administration. Which segues right into the next thing, which is President Biden already put a moratorium on any Anwar um, drilling, any, you know, Anwar developments essentially at all. Now, keep in mind that for, for many Alaskans, you guys know that there's already been some some tracks, some some leases that have been been bought up, okay? So we can always say that the coastal plain of Alaska's Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, otherwise known as ANWR, has, uh, has been a, a target for many environmentalist groups. And clearly, they're trying to make Alaska just one big national park at this point. It's, I mean, they're not even trying to hide it. So there's a lot of things that are going on right now that uh, are preventing a lot of resource development. And the Biden administration is hell-bent on making sure that doesn't happen in terms of developing Alaska's resources. And again, that affects our economy. 
But leases were awarded, and they were awarded to the Alaska Industrial Development and Export Authority. Um, the Knick Arm Services got one track. Uh, the AIDEA, which I just announced, had seven tracks, and then the Renegade Alaska Inc. got one track as well. So they've th- the leases have been sold, the the tracks have been bought, but right now there's an executive order out there that, that these ind- these companies cannot progress further and start to um, to do some research and development, which is I, essentially they're now uh, land management companies because they're just looking at the land they purchased and clearly can't do anything at all. And, and an interesting quote from the, the Bureau of Land Management, Alaska State Director, says, these releases reflect a solid commitment by both the state and industry to pursue responsible oil and gas development on Alaska's north slope in light of recent assessments. Here's the problem. The quote I'm reading to you was before this memorandum. Now, there's no there's no development at all. It has been put on pause. And the real question is this, is, is what's the lasting impact as we ripple down uh, over the next four years? Because this is just the start. I mean, day one before the poor, before even the ink was dry, this was happening. And it really calls into question the next four years, and more specifically here in Alaska. One of the things that Alaska, as most of you know, is that we have an incredible amount of natural resource here. Anything from minerals and, and metals to our forests, our forestry uh, prospects to oil and gas. I mean, we have it here. We have it all. And yet now we're, there's going to be a clampdown. And currently the U.S. Is the, is the biggest exporter and developer of gas right now. First time in a very long time. First time in a very long time, and that was under the Trump administration. And it really feels like the Biden administration from day one is making it a point to reverse that, to make a, not just Alaska, but America energy dependent and not energy independent. And you got to ask yourself why. What's the long play here? Now, if you ask me the long play and why so many Democrats are are, are really pushing for the Green New Deal is, is I think a lot of what's going on is tied to China. And this is what I mean. A lot of the components, a lot of the, the the metals, and a lot of the manufacturing that the Green New Deal would would bring to the United States, all are coming from China. China make China's geared up to make billions of dollars on the Green New Deal just by manufacturing alone. That's not even talking about resource development and the use of their materials over there. So you've already got this incentive which a lot of Democrats recently have been linked to China, including money, and and we don't need to go down that road. But the reality is, is a move to green energy really helps the Chinese economy. And what it does is it it really hinders the American economy. It it makes it much more difficult. You're losing sectors in the the resource industry. You're you're killing states, and you're effectively turning Alaska into just a a vacation destination instead of a a state that can really develop its resources. And so this is really concerning. I'm not even sure what uh, to do about this um, other than really being very careful when we start choosing elected officials, because this is another example in the state that we need to start really assessing who's in office and what they believe in and what they see for Alaska's future, both economically and resource development wise, which are both inextricably linked. So it's really important that we do that. I mean, this is what it's boiling down to. Obviously, we have national uh, roads and blockades that are going to stop some things. But as a state, we really need to start taking control and figuring out ways that we can develop within the state without having the national or federal government really dictating much of what we can do. And, I, and I'm not sure, I'm sure there are people out there that have thought of this over and over and over again. But the reality is, is now our economy is going to be not just slowed, but any sort of potential development moving forward is going to be stunted by a lot of these moves that the Biden administration has already made. Listen, I know a lot of people were, were hoping that a Biden administration was uh, just a a vapor that Trump would somehow find a way to stay in office. But the reality is right now, guys, and the truth is, is that uh, Joe Biden is now the current president of the United States and his administration is pushing forth 
legislation, executive orders, and ideology that just prevents Alaska from being successful. So the hope is, is that we can get in there and really fight and Alaskans can fight and in our state government can really uh, lobby what we need as a state. But right now it's concerning. And, and I know a lot of Alaskans out there are not feeling really comfortable with where we're going, uh, both within the state as well as federally. But as we switch on, let's talk about electing officials. I said that's one of the key components to uh, ensuring that energy uh, independence here in Alaska and also just the ability for Alaska to develop its own resources comes to fruition. But as we look at Anchorage in particular, there's a mayor race coming up here. The deadline for filing is going to be Friday, the 29th of January. And I, I believe the ballots are going to be sent in at some point around March 16th. The election ends on the April 6th. So there's a lot going on right now. But I just want to kind of let you know currently who the players in the field are for uh, mayor. Okay. So we've got a couple. We've got Darren Colbury. We've got Dustin Darden has thrown his name in the race. We've got uh, Heather Herndon. I hope I'm saying these names correct. George Martinez. And those are some of the, the lesser known names. And then we're going to get into some of the names that obviously are going to make a bigger splash. And, and let's just kind of talk a little bit more about them. Uh, we got Bill Falsey, uh, obviously part of the um, Berkowitz administration, heavily involved in that. Uh, we've got Forrest Dunbar. And again, these two are both Falsey and Forrest are, are Democrats, very left leaning. Forrest has got his, his name in the race. And uh, again, uh, just look at some of the decisions and the vote pattern for Forrest as he's been on the assembly. I think you can kind of tell what type of leader and what type of direction Forrest would bring Anchorage in. And then you've got sort of the middle of the road right now, sort of probably the most centrist you can find. And that's Bill Evans. Bill Evans is, is I would say, the most centrist candidate we have uh, on the this list here. And... I would say that is probably a fair and accurate representation of Evans. I, I'm hoping maybe I could get him on the podcast. That'd be great. But as as we move forward, I, I think Bill Evans is probably the most centrist. Now, what are some of his um, stances on really key issues? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go through all that right now. We'll have lit podcasts uh, here coming up that will go through each of these candidates' policies and really highlight some of the most important ones for Anchorage. But I can tell you, he, he's probably the most centrist. And then you have the two uh, more conservative and Republican candidates, which is uh, Mike Robbins and then Dave Bronson. And so what you can see here is uh, a couple different things. All candidates, with the exception of Heather Herndon, filed on January 15th. So they're all official. They're all going to be on the ballot. It's game time. So it's really going to be interesting to see what exactly happens. I know that in the past, I have been very vocal about the Republican conservative side. Um, those candidates getting together and talking and trying to try to prevent the vote from splitting. And I think it's going to be extremely important that happens. If you, if the conservative constituency wants a conservative candidate, a Republican candidate, in office as the mayor in Anchorage, you can't you can't split the vote. If there's any chance to even prevent a runoff, you definitely can't split the vote. But there has to be some kind of understanding between that conservative candidate. And it's something I've been harping on uh, for a while. And those candidates really need to get together and, and to decide what, what the deal is. Because, um, you know, it might be too late. It might, I mean, it definitely might be a little too late. Now, I am not sure... If, again, I don't have it in front of me here <clears throat> as I'm at my house, but I'm not sure if candidates can actually withdraw now. So all names probably are going to be on the ballot, which, as, as I know, running running races here in the assembly and in other races uh, for office, when your name's on the ballot, that people will vote for it because they don't know. They really don't know. And, and my hope is, is that the conservative voice comes out strong and really makes a presence. So... Again, I was hoping that we could get together, um, the conservative candidates could get together and, and really decide on who was going to to provide the best opportunity to make a run and, and win and, and hold that office. 
I don't think that's going to happen. So it, it's really an interesting uh, perspective as we move forward. And what is that going to look like? What What is that going to look like down the road? I really hope that does not uh, produce any sort of... Uh, um, issue. I, I'm hoping that, you know, at the end of the day, I'm hoping that um, people get out, they vote, and that the majority of those who vote obviously are going to have their voices heard and the candidate will will be in office. I mean, listen, for those of you out there who have been on the forefront of a lot of these protests, a lot of these um, conversations with the assembly, now is not the time to sit back. I think if there's one thing I've learned about, it, particularly in Anchorage here, is that there's really been a, a bee's nest that's been rattled. And if there's going to be any change, it's going to start with this first race coming in, which is the, the Anchorage mayoral race. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm very interested to see uh, how this plays out. And, and again, my my I implore everybody, get out and vote. Get out and vote. Well... From voting to actual COVID-19 news, some interesting news right now is that more Alaskans, and this is a headline here on Must Read Alaska, so I go to mustreadalaska.com. I want to encourage you to, to do so and to uh, to check this out. But the, the headline is more Alaskans vaccinated today than who have had the coronavirus in the past year. So, I mean, this is this is good news for those Alaskans out there who were really concerned about making sure those vaccinations got out and were getting to the people in need. Uh, right now, uh, I believe Alaska is the number one per capita vaccinated rate that we have in America right now. It's 9.93 doses per 100 people with West Virginia coming in second, I believe, if you look at the at the um, at the article. But there has been some really significant movement here in the vaccination process, uh, both here in Alaska and getting it out rurally into to vital populations. I know that uh, it shows that about f- almost 60,000, just shy of 60,000 people have in Alaska have received at least the first dose of the vaccination. And then that that kind of follows up with about 13,000 have received both doses. Now, remember, the vaccination is a two-dose vaccination so you get your first one and then uh, I, I I can't remember off the top of my head exactly how many days after you get the second one but it is a two dose vaccination uh, so that that roughly equates to about eight percent of Alaskans have received at least one dose of the vaccination um, and and listen that's that's good news I know a lot of people uh, who have been afraid to get out to go around uh, to different, um, venues to just live their life have been waiting for this vaccination to come so that they can do such. And, and if that's you, great, perfect. It's it's out there. Um, here's the thing. I'm really curious as to how many Alaskans are going to take the vaccination. I know that in the assembly, the uh, assemblyman Allard was shut down by the chair, Felix Rivera, because Rivera... <laughs> Because she was mentioning people of color, she was mentioning specific communities, and you know that just well, apparently that's not allowed. But there is a real concern that specific communities are going to reject and not even take the vaccination. So I'd be curious over the next three months, as the vaccination becomes more readily available, that some of the more high risk populations, including the frontline workers and and first responders, who obviously need to take that vaccination first, as they work through the layers of priority once it gets to, hey, anybody that wants it can have it. How many people actually take the vaccination? And more importantly, and this is something that I'm real concerned about, is what is that going to look like nationwide moving forward? And what I mean by that is, are are employers going to require vaccinations? Are airlines going to require vaccinations? Is transportation industry going to require vaccinations, whether it's by plane, whether it's by train, whatever it may be, cruise, what is going to be the ripple effect of a required versus a um, suggested or, or where's the autonomy going to lie is the question. And I think for a lot of Alaskans, that is a big concern. Where's the autonomy when it comes to vaccination? And is it is it going to be required nationally? Uh, Is it going to be required by your work? I mean, there are a lot of questions out there in terms of vaccination. And I think 
And I think what's probably going to drive that is how many people actually initially get the vaccination once available. So like we said, they're going to go through the tier of priority. And then after that, they're going to provide the vaccination available to anybody who wants it. And I think it's at that point, once they have a, you know, six to 12 month view of what that'll look like, I think you're going to start to see exactly where statewide employment wise, um, the transportation industry industry, where are they going to take the autonomy? Are they going to leave it in the hands of the people or are they going to try to take it for themselves? And I think that is going to be a massive, massive question. And frankly, it should be because at this point, we're really looking at some some interesting situations in terms of policy and procedure moving forward. Because as many of you know, there's this EO to AO program here in Anchorage specifically where there there is a push to move a lot of the emergency orders to more of uh, ordinances, so law. And, and that's a, that should be that should be very concerning to every Alaskan, regardless of political affiliation, because essentially the assembly could turn the emergency order of the mask mandate into law and create a, a financial penalty for such and even go as far as jail time, depending on a repeat offense. And so I want to make Alaskans very, very aware of what this means. This means that the assembly is looking to parse out and, and pick out particular emergency orders to then put on the books as laws so that they can be enforced through either financial penalty and perhaps even as far as jail time. And so you've got to ask yourself this question, Alaska, Anchorage, is what are you willing to allow? Because if this is the case, keep in mind, here's the convergence of two things happening right now. There has been a 90-day extension for the declaration of emergency. And the assembly did its darndest to try to tell you that there's a big difference between extending the declaration and extending the emergency orders. The problem is it's just a lie. And no time with the extension of the declaration of an emergency, which then provides the administration, particularly at this point, the acting mayor, with the authority to place emergency orders in place, there's no distinction between the two. And they're and they're trying to they're trying to pull a wool over your eyes because I believe they understand what's going on, that the people are angry. And so they're trying to say, listen, we're not we're not doing any emergency orders. All we're saying is that there's still an emergency declaration out there and we need to extend that. Don't put that on us. That's the administration. They control the emergency orders. Here's the reality. And I want everybody that's listening to this podcast to understand something. It's a bold faced lie. It's a bait and switch. It's a political maneuver. And it's the assembly trying to save their cans because they know that public opinion right now is that the assembly has given over power and and not just a declaration of emergency, but emergency orders as well, because the two are inextricably linked as well. They're they're intertwined to the acting mayor who has thus, along with the Berkowitz administration, killed the Anchorage economy. They they are they are suffocating it. And so what they're trying to do is try to pretend and pull the wool over your eyes that hey, no, 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 no. We're not doing emergency orders. No, 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 that's not us. No, no, no. No. Guys, you got it all wrong. We're for you. But we can't just let's say there's no declaration of an emergency. Like that's like we that's irresponsible. No, 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 guys, no. We're only we're only extending this 90 days because there's a declaration of emergency. What they do with that's not our fault. Well, yeah, it is. You made the decision, you need to to answer for the consequences. And the consequences is is that you provide unfoddered power to the acting mayor and their administration to do whatever they want. That's on you. That is on you. And the problem is is that a lot of people shouldn't, and I hope are not, buying into that garbage. Do not buy into that garbage because I'm going to tell you right now, it is going to be the backbone for which Force Dunbar runs on. It's going to be the backbone of which Bill uh, Falsey runs on. It's going to be the backbone for which, well, particularly those two. And it should be the lead for Dave Bronson, Mike Robbins, uh, Bill Evans, uh, Dustin Darden. I mean, listen, there is no shortage of sound bites in regards to what's been going on over the last, now we're closing in on almost a year. And keep in mind, it was initially, hey, 
just make sure you wipe down, sneeze into your arms. Um, make sure you're you're constantly cleaning around to now the goalpost. Now the goalpost, people, is that 60 to 70 percent of Anchorage within, excuse me, 60 to 70 percent of the municipality population needs to be vaccinated before the Department of Health, the Anchorage Department of Health would recommend loosening the emergency orders. That is insane. That is insane. Now we went from, hey, we're trying to flatten the curve. Hey, it's only two weeks. Hey, it's only four weeks. Hey, it's only going to be the biggest time of the year in December that we're shutting down to now 60 to 70 percent of the population in the municipality needs to be vaccinated for the Anchorage Department of Health to feel comfortable enough to to loosen up the emergency orders. I'm begging you to remember this. I am begging you to remember this because it's only going to get worse if you do not start holding our officials accountable for this. And now granted, I get it. Austin Quinn Davidson was not elected by the people, but we need to start holding people accountable. And now, as I was saying, the convergence, the convergence right now is, is that there's a 90 day extension of the declaration of emergency, which as everybody should know, which also means the emergency orders and emergency powers are extended as well. The convergence comes is that's in April. The election is April 6th, I believe. The election ends April 6th, which means you got a week, maybe two, to find out who is going to be the mayor. And don't think for one second that they are not going to make a final decision. It Mark my words. If Dave Bronson or Mike Robbins or even maybe even Bill Evans wins the election, I will guarantee you they end the the declaration, the emergency declaration immediately because they have an assembly meeting and I don't know the date, but I guarantee you it's around a week or two after the election ends. They're going to end the declaration of emergency and strip the incoming mayor of all powers. They're going to do it. Now, they might extend it till I think the mayor takes over in the new mayor takes over in July, maybe. I, I, I think. Again, I'm at home. I don't have everything in front of me. But that is the reality. I guarantee you, if it is not a Democrat, a left-leaning Democrat, not a centrist, not a, not a conservative or right-leaning candidate, but if it is anybody else with the exception of a Democrat, they're going to strip and, and just remove the Declaration of Emergency. Mark my words, regardless if 60 to 70% of the population has been vaccinated or not. I'm telling you, this has been political. This is to retain power. This is to retain money. There's a lot going on here. So I am telling you, watch that. Watch that because I it, it would not surprise me. And, and let me tell you something. Anchorage, specifically in the municipality, those listening, that right there, if that comes to fruition, if my prediction comes to to pass that should tell you all you need to know about your elected officials that should tell you all you need to know about your elected officials do not forget that the anchorage department of health said that they would not recommend any lessening or loosening of the emergency orders until 60 to 70 percent of the population has been vaccinated just remember that the population within the municipality just remember that. Hey, listen, that's about all the time I have. There's so much to talk about, so much we can get into. And and listen, do not lose hope. If you were frustrated or concerned, there, I, I know there's a lot of people out there that are not thrilled with what's going on, but it's not time to stop. It's not time to stop talking about it. It's not time to share, stop sharing ideas. And it's certainly not time to stop voting and having your voice be heard. So listen, Right now, what you can do is if you want to stay on top of all of the content that we have, there's so many things you can do. And if you listen thus far, I appreciate that. I'm going to give you some golden nuggets right now. Currently, the legislative legislation, the Alaska legislation is in session, the legislator. And you can get incredible up-to-date news by going to clubmrak.com and signing up for that newsletter. 
Suzanne is going to provide you with incredible content. It's bullet pointed. It's quick. It's easy to read. You get everything you need to, and it's insider ball. You get to know what's going on, including, I believe the first one had music, what music was playing uh, there. So there, there's some great content. There's some fun content. I want to encourage you to do that. Also, if you haven't, bookmark mustreadalaska.com. Make sure that you're checking that out always. But more importantly, if you're more of an app person, we've got a Google Play app. We've got an Apple app at the Apple Store. Uh, go ahead and go and download that, whatever device you have, and you can keep up to date with all of our content as well. And also, if you want to continue to support us, which helps us create this content and so much more, go to mustreadalaska.com and go up to the top right. There's a donate page or button up there. Donate every little bit counts. It doesn't matter how big or small. Um, you know, it's you, the listener, and the reader, and the supporter that we really do what we do for. And and we work with a phenomenal team. Suzanne and John are phenomenal, and everybody else that contributes to Must Read Alaska. We're just really appreciative of of you guys. So thank you again. Listen, don't put your head down. Now is just the time to start to really plug away and get into the work. So. Make sure that you're out there. Make sure your voice is being heard and make sure you're wanting to change and influence the communities around you because that's the only way that you effectively produce change. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Until then, stay classy.